So the motor blog community. Oh, I've been around the motor blog community for a while now. And even though I haven't really been able to produce any content with a lot of motorbike stuff on it, I have done my fair share. I've done a lot of um, videos on the on the Jeep and obviously my alter ego part chair detective. But the motorbike community has always been very supportive of whatever it is that I've tried to do. And I really appreciate that from all of you. great place to be YouTube uh, particularly in the motor vlog world I find that most of the people that are in the motor vlog world are very genuine and we all have a love for riding a motorcycle some of us are much more skilled than others and most of the people that I knock around with are just you know, hard working blokes and there's some hard working women out there as well that do some really great content and I wish I had enough time to watch them all but you just don't get enough time to you know, in your day to be able to watch everybody's videos and there's some really, really good content creators out there I could rattle off quite a few right now, but um, I won't go into that. Ah, oh, hell, I might as well. <laughs> Anonymous Biker USA, Habusa. He's got a bloody good, um, awesome channel. Does a lot of stuff around uh, New Orleans and the historical parts of New Orleans, which is always very interesting. He does uh, really good voiceovers on his videos as well. And he's always in the chats, in the live chats, and always supportive of so many other motor vloggers out there. Just a genuine bloke. But the only thing about Anonymous Biker USA is he doesn't have a face. And I really feel sorry for him because when God was handing out faces, he must have forgot Anonymous Biker USA. <laughs> so if you haven't subscribed to Anonymous Biker USA, make sure you go and click that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you get his notifications. This road's not too good. Speaking of the road, South of here is 90 kilometres, well there was last year there was 90 kilometres of Australia's roughest road and this section of the road was bitumenised about 15 years ago. One of the, uh, one of Western Australia's most iconic tourist destinations is Cape Levique and a place called Kuldjaman Wilderness Resort. State government decided to build the last section of the road, which is 90 kilometres of, of uh, dirt. And up until Friday, there was 45, I think it was 45 kilometres left to go. So by November, apparently by November, the whole road's going to be bitumenised, and I'm going to be able to ride all the way to Broome which will be 200 kilometres worth of bitumen and I'll be able to ride back again. So I'm planning next year to uh, do a trip to Perth. Ride down to Perth and then drop in and see my spike filmmaker bike alive. 
if you haven't subscribed to Ice Bike or you don't know who Ice Bike is, he's a biker dude that um, drives a trike, a Harley Davidson trike. He's into drones as well. And he has a YouTube radio station called Ice Bike. He'll make a bike alive. And he's got uh, three three uh, shows he does uh, for in Australia. It's Thursday, Friday, and Sunday morning. He also has a Facebook page, Global Bikers and Trikers Nation, or something like that. He's got about four thousand followers on that uh, on that platform. Great Aussie bloke. And there's quite a few of us that um, frequent his channel. It's been two years, uh, two years, <laughs> two hours of malarkey, talking crap, enjoying the music and enjoying each other's company. So give that a go. Subscribe to me if you've not been there before. Donkeys! Now oh, that sun's beating down, I tell you what. I don't go anywhere out uh, out on the road without all my gear on. It still gets pretty hot. I'm kind of glad that I don't wear a leather jacket, particularly up here in the top end. Not often that it gets cold early in the morning in the dry season. It does get cold, but certainly not like uh, down south. But for me, the cold uh, really affects me, something chronic. Many years ago, about 30 years ago, I got uh, a thing called Ross River Fever. Uh, it's, a, it's a disease that's a mosquito-borne disease similar to malaria in some ways and for some people it reoccurs keeps coming back unfortunately I'm one of those anyway uh, Ross River fever it uh, takes its toll it's taken its toll on my body over the years I've been uh, in ICU a couple of times because of it my white blood cells are absolutely shot. Um, however, over the last few years, my blood work it seems to be getting better. Um, but what it does is it uh, it gives me uh, arthritic type symptoms, and in the cold weather, I really find it hard to get moving my joints all ache really badly sometimes I'm hobbling around like a little old man it's almost like rheumatoid arthritis but um, it's not like that you've got it all the time I do suffer from some uh, symptoms I guess that I believe are directly from Ross River but the doctors have never been able to really determine what is actually the, the uh, problem. I have some kind of uh, blood disease. It's called uh, chronic, chronic neutropenia. Chronic neutropenia. Uh, there's another word that goes with that, but uh, 
basically it means the doctors have got no bloody idea what's wrong with me so <laughs> they just chuck a knave on there I've been poked and prodded and stuck with needles and bone marrow biopsies I woke up on the operating table when they did a bone biopsy on my um, on my spine I nearly clocked the doctor in the head with my fist then they jabbed me with some more anaesthetic and knocked me out again Man, that's the most pain I've ever felt in my life. I actually said to him, just give me a hammer and a chisel and I'll do it myself. <laughs> and I remember him looking at me with this look of absolute fear because he thought I was going to jump off the table and throttle him. <laughs> yeah, well, they jabbed me before I could do that. So, yeah, I've... Uh, got this uh, blood disease that they have no idea what it is I said to them look if they can come up with an idea and if they know if they find out what the disease is then great but if they don't and they want to put a name to it then they can call, call my last name and I'll take the uh, royalties for it so I figure I might as well get some money out of it while I'm at it <laughs> but uh, no, it's not likely to happen. It does, uh, it does knock me around a bit. I can get chronic fatigue very easily. And uh, when I get fatigued, um, I start to get sick. So, I've, I've managed and I've been able to work out how my body reacts to different situations so when I feel that uh, fatigue coming on I take a break and have a sleep yesterday I slept for about four hours during the middle of the day so I have been fairly fatigued just recently there's a lot going on those donkeys are around here somewhere Keep a lookout for them. Now they've moved on. There's a dead cow. I'll pull up here. Take some photographs. Now oh, there's some donkeys over there. 